everyone and welcome back. Uh, today's video is about undercarriage component identification. Um, this is a critical step. I'm actually going to take the iPad and go right down the list and show exactly what to take pictures of, what they're looking for, and where to check for where. We're also going to go over how to identify system one and regular tracks and the difference between pins and bushings that have been turned and not turned. So stay tuned. Hopefully there'll be some good info in here and we can get this undercarriage stuff started. Okay, um, for those of you following along at home, we're gonna move through this kind of quick so that if you're actually out in the field inspecting one of these and want to follow this video, um, it should rapid fire through pretty quick, I hope. And then we'll go into more detail at the end. So anyway, uh, the first thing you're gonna do is obviously steel track undercarriage, steel track. Um, shoe width is across here. Uh, grouser bar type, these are the grouser bars the bars that actually give the dozer traction. Um, whereas there's one per shoe on this machine, so it's single grouser bar. Uh, triples you usually run into on excavators. Um, I have seen triples on a few dozers, it's kind of rare. And then dual grouser bars you'll find on track loaders a lot, for like instance, a 963. So that's your different style of track bars. And then you'll see the ch next checkbox is system one undercarriage. Um, I'm going to go into that in more detail later. Let's just go ahead and move forward so if you're actually doing an inspection in the field, we can keep this thing moving. All right, next up is pivot shafts. Uh, not all dozers have pivot shafts. There is such thing as a rigid frame, track frame. Um, you'll find those on smaller dozers, D39 Komatsu, 650 John Deere, uh, D4s, stuff like that. This is one that has it, so I'm going to show you an example of it. The pivot shaft is right here. It's this big shaft that the actual track frame pivots on. Um, the end of the cap is right here. This comes off giving you access to the pivot shaft. What you want to look for here is any movement and oil leaking from here or oil leaking from the seal back here. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give you a quick close up of that just so you have a better idea what it looks like back here. But that's the pivot shaft. Okay, here's a better look at your pivot shaft. It's right here. You're going to want to inspect to make sure there's no oil leaking around here. Also no oil leaking around here better look at the pivot shaft. Take good pictures of that on both sides. All right, the next thing you see is equalizer bar. It's right here. It's this big bar that the tracks actually pivot on. It pivots in the middle of the dozer. So one track goes up and one track goes down, sort of like a big leaf spring. All right, a closer look at the equalizer bar. Want to inspect these pins for wear. Make sure there's no play in this. That's your equalizer bar. I'll take pictures of that on both sides. All right, the next one is the left roller frame. Um, that's the whole frame that all the tracks and rollers and sprockets and idlers ride on. The whole frame. And you'll do it again, of course, for the right side. But left roller frame on this machine. All right, track tensioner. Um, that's right here. This is actually pushed out by grease. It's what tensions the track to keep it from falling off the front idler. Um, so that's your track tensioner right there. All right, the next one is track pads. I hope that one's pretty self-explanatory. They're right here. All right, <clears throat> next you'll have track bar and grouser bar heights. This is your grouser bar. It's the actual bar on each track pad. Just wanna measure the height across there and the track pad itself. All right, your next one is track bushings. Um, this one requires some attention. Uh, so, your bushing is in the rail, but for a better visual explanation of the bushings and the links, um, I'm going to throw it to uh, Professor Matt. Uh, Professor Matt, you want to take it from here? Hey Matt, thanks. Um, for pins and bushings, um, you have three different options. You have rotating bushings, bushings turned, bushings not turned. Um, I have three examples here on the tailgate of the truck that I want to show you and maybe give you a better idea of what they mean by turning pins and bushings. So let's jump down to this. Okay, um, what you see here is uh, two different styles of links of track and a sprocket segment. Um, the one on the left is System 1, which you're going to talk about later. The one on the right is just a regular heavy-duty track. Um, so when they say press out pins and bushings and turn the pins and bushings, this is the actual bushing right here. What happens 
where they have a machine in the track shop that presses this pin out, this bushing can be rotated and then wore again on this side. Um, essentially, uh, what happens in the process is your sprocket rides on the bushing like that. So as the sprocket's turning and turning and turning, it's slowly wearing away that bushing as it wears away the sprocket. So by pressing the bushing out and rotating the bushing, you get to wear the track out again. Um, so if you say that a machine does not have the pins and bushings turned, but the bushings are wore on one side, it still has roughly 50% of its track life left. Um, if it is turned and you say that it's not been turned, then... Uh, it is uh, wore out, and they're buying the machine thinking they still have 50% of a track life left. So, this would be where your track pads are. These pins and bushings have not been turned. Flip this thing over. This is a war side of the bushing. I'm going to get a closer view down here. Um, this side of the bushing is considered worn. And it will feel sort of like an egg shape because as it wears, it wears it like that. Uh, system one, on the other hand, on this side, the bushings themselves actually rotate. That's where the rotating bushing part comes in. Um, as the machine drives forward, the idler rides in the middle. I'm going to show a better example of that on the machine. And it actually rotates that bushing constantly. So there is no bushing to turn, so to speak. It's turning itself. Um, I hope that helps explain it a little bit. Uh, that's a pretty critical step that can be a very expensive mistake if missed. So please try to pay attention. Okay, here's a close-up of that bushing I was talking about. You can really see how war it is right here. It's worn down where the sprocket has been riding, but it has not been turned because the other side is still flat. Uh, when they turn a pin in bushing, they rotate that bushing and wear the bottom side. So your picture in your iPad should be something similar to this. Take a good picture of that. If you look in there and you see where it's worn like this on both sides, that bushing has been turned. It will feel sort of like an egg shape. You can feel it with your hands, this little point right here. So there you go. That's a better look. That's a great picture. If you were on the machine, that would be an excellent picture of their pin and bushing. All right. Now... We talked about system one. That was uh, this link here with the pins and bushings that are self-rotating. Uh, how do you identify system one? Well, um, system one, the idler rides in the middle of the track rail. Whereas regular tracks with the pins and bushings you would turn, the idler rides on top of the track rail. The easiest way to tell is just a visual inspection. Also, system one, the track links are, are usually two separate sizes. It'll be a small link, large link, small link, large link. That's another easy way to tell. Whereas traditionally, regular tracks are equal spaced links. There is a Komatsu version that has the super, different spaced uh, links, but Komatsu does not run system one. System one is a cat thing. So if you see that on a Komatsu, don't assume it's system one. The idler still rides on the top of the track rail. So anyway, I hope that helps explain the pin and bushing thing. I know it can be a bit confusing. Anyway, back to you in the field, Matt. What? Oh, carrier roller. This is your next one. Uh, this is your carrier roller. Some dozers have two. Excavators have two. Um, this is your carrier roller, not your track roller, carrier roller. All right, these are your track rollers. They were on the bottom of the track frame, not to be confused with the carrier roller. These are the track rollers. We need to take good pictures of these, check for bearing wear, check for slop in any of the rollers or loud noises. All right, front idler. It's in the front. All right, <clears throat> next is rear idler. It's uh, in the rear. Now, um, do low track dozers have a rear idler? Um, to answer that question, I'm gonna throw it to Matt.
Hey, Matt, you want to uh, take it from here? Um, no, it doesn't have a rear idler. All right, um, sprockets is last. Uh, you want to check for sprocket wear. It's very important. You can see how these sprockets have a nice squared off edge right here. They're nice and even. If it looks like you can shave with it, it's wore out. I actually have an example. You see how pointed those are and cupped out looking compared to this? That is a wore out sprocket. If you see that, that sprocket is wore out. Wore out, good condition. All right, well, that's an undercarriage. Um, you're just going to repeat the same steps on the other side, and uh, you should be good to go. I hope that explains things a little bit better, and I hope you found it informative. Stay tuned for more. Thank you, everybody.